He's rare. He's one of one. And his second signature shoe is okay. What's up guys? Thanks for watching Wear Testers on YouTube. My name is Jackson. Today we have the highly anticipated performance review on the Puma MB02. The MB01 was one of the best basketball shoes of 2021. And the follow up, the MB02, feels pretty similar, but there are a few aspects of this shoe that make it feel like a slight downgrade. What? And I'll get into that, but as always, we're going to start off with my favorite aspect of the shoe, which is the traction. The MB02 utilizes a traction pattern that looks like feathers, which is inspired by one of Lamello's tattoos. It's also pretty similar to what we got on the Stewie 1. What this is, is a multi-directional traction setup, and it works really well indoors. The pattern is on the tighter side, so on dustier courts, it's gonna be picking up a lot of dust, so you're gonna have to be wiping the outsole pretty frequently. I play on some pretty gnarly courts, and the MB02 was still able to keep up on all of them. It's not on the elite level of traction, but it definitely gets the job done. The outsole on these is rounded, much like it was on the MB01, and the traction pattern wraps up the medial side forefoot, and also just a little bit on the lateral side forefoot. So what that does is it keeps you covered on shifty movements if you're rolling up onto the side of your foot. My pair, of course, has a translucent rubber outsole. The rubber compound, it's ultra sticky, ultra grippy. Giggity giggity, giggity goo. Just like it was on the MB01. And if this is similar to the MB01, where the translucent outsoles outperform the solid rubber outsoles, then of course I would recommend going with the colorway that has a translucent outsole, as opposed to a solid rubber outsole. I don't have a pair with solid rubber, so I can't really confirm that, but it is something to keep in mind. If you're planning on playing in these outdoors, don't expect them to last very long. The tread pattern is thin, the rubber is pretty soft. You might get good traction while they last, but they're probably not gonna last very long. Now moving on to the cushion. Much like its predecessor, the MB02, features nitro-infused foam, but this time you've got nitro foam both in the heel and in the forefoot. The issue that I have with the cushion is that the carrier foam is a big, thick slab of dense compression molded EVA. And while using a denser foam like this is good for longevity, using foam that's this dense as a carrier meant that I didn't feel the softer nitro foam as much as I would have liked to. And even after significant break-in time, it does get better but still the midsole is just too thick and too dense for my personal preferences and I'm sure for a lot of your personal preferences out there as well. Especially for a shoe that's made for a point guard. Using compression molded EVA is not a bad thing, but if you're gonna use it, I feel like you need to use it in a lower profile setup so you're getting a more responsive, low to the ground feel. And that would also give the shoe better flexibility because that's the other big drawback of having a thick, dense midsole is that it doesn't flex as well as it should. So the combination of a narrow, rounded outsole with a thick, dense cushion setup that doesn't have a whole lot of court feel, that just made for a less than desirable underfoot ride for me. One good thing about the cushion is that the impact protection is pretty solid. There's a lot of foam underneath your feet, it's not going to bottom out, so if you're after impact protection, these are gonna deliver that for you. The insole is a thick ortholite, pretty standard for what Puma's been offering with their basketball line recently, same as it was on the MB01. It's really good for step-in comfort, it's not gonna give you much more past that. Moving along! to the materials. Engineered mesh and fuse. We've seen it a lot, we've got it here, but this is not one of my favorite implementations of it. <laughs> the mesh here is thin, but it's crispy and feels too plasticky for me. There are some positives with a setup like this. It's durable, it offers some pretty solid breathability, and the materials are strong enough that they're gonna help with containment. They're not gonna let your foot slide over the footbed. Still, this feels like a downgrade from the MB01, which used a similar mixture of textile and fuse, but the textiles were nice and soft and strategically placed so that the shoe flexed really well and felt more comfortable around your foot. Let's move on to the fit. I got my true size, and that's what I'd recommend for most people out there. The MB02 fits a little bit more narrow than the MB01 did, so if you are a wide footer, you might wanna go try these on. But for most of you out there, whatever your true size is, is probably gonna be the way to go 
on the MBO2. I had no containment issues from heel to toe, I felt locked in. In a world where low tops reign supreme, you have a mid top construction, which means you've got a good number of eyelets here that you can mess with the fit a little bit. You've also got a traditional upper and tongue construction, so you can kind of adjust the fit, mess with it a little bit, get it to where you like it. I personally found that if I laced them up all the way to the top eyelet, it constricted my ankle mobility just a little bit. So I had it on the second to highest eyelet and that worked perfectly for me. One thing that I didn't like that much is that you have some extra room above the toe and when you combine that with the crispy fusing materials, you get a nice gnarly little toe bubble right here. It didn't negatively impact forefoot containment, so it's really a non-issue, but I prefer a shoe that fits more closely over the top of my foot. I didn't really find the upper to be that comfortable on these, and that's really due to the materials. The fit did its job pretty well. Your foot's gonna be contained as long as you're getting your correct size. So moving on to the support, if you get your correct size and the correct fit, you're gonna find that the MBO2 support is solid. You don't have an outrigger or even a particularly wide base, but that cushion is really stable underneath your foot. And the combination of the really dense, thick midsole along with the midfoot shank that's in there. It actually makes the MBO2 a little more stiff than I would personally like. That's what she said. <laughs> it also means the MBO2 is not going to be bending in any way that it shouldn't be. As I mentioned before, the MBO2 does a good job of keeping the foot contained. Heel, midfoot, forefoot, I had no issues with containment. You got a big old heel counter back here that does a good job of keeping things locked in. Again, I would have preferred the stack height of the midsole to be a little bit lower, maybe to have a little bit wider of a base, and that would have added to the stability overall. But it's not a deal breaker. Overall, with support, I don't really have any complaints. Get your correct size and you'll be good to go. So overall, playing in the MBO2 was kind of a mixed bag for me. I liked the traction, I liked the fit. I did not like the stiff cushion setup or the materials very much. For a shoe that's made for a point guard, I would expect a little more flexibility, a little bit more court feel, especially when you're utilizing a rounded outsole. And maybe put some slightly more soft cushion in there instead of just throwing a dense, thick slab of foam in there and calling it a day. I would like to feel that four foot nitro foam since it's there. And having this much dense foam in there also means that the MBO2 isn't gonna be the lightest option out there for you. So it's not a bad shoe by any means, but at the $130 price point, I definitely feel like there are better options for you within that price range. But that about wraps it up for the performance review on the Puma MB02. Of course, if you have the MB02, feel free to sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think about them. The good thing about these as opposed to the MB01 is that they seem to be a lot more widely available. So if you want to give them a shot, it's going to be a lot easier for you to do so. Sensational. Big thanks to Puma for sending this pair over. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace and much love to you.